Welcome to the Mind Lab Show, Australia's most informative prospecting live stream. This is the place where you'll get all the tips, tricks and super deals for your next gold prospecting or treasure hunting adventure. Now look, in this episode we're going to catch up with uh, the latest gold and treasure news and stories from the Mind Lab Show community. Beachy Bruce is going to run us through the vibration function on the Equinox 900. The Coffee Bush Kid and I check out an old mining camp site in the Whipstick, and I'll answer your questions live. Of course, we'll give away some fantastic kit to help you in the great outdoors. I'm Gold Digger Dave, and let's get digging. There's nothing like the sound of gold under the coil when I'm out there swinging my detector. That signal so sweet when I hear that beep beep couldn't think of many things better. There's nothing like the sound of gold under the coil when I'm out there swinging my detector. Okay, well, look, uh, apologies, we're running a little bit late, uh, very, very busy at the uh, Caravan Camping Show today and uh, a lot of traffic, so we got back a little bit late to set up for this evening, so uh, not my usual format, but I am here. Look, it's it kicks straight off into our uh, gold and treasure news, and of course it's great news for all of you who hang out on the northern beaches of Sydney with Miners Den Brookvale Store. It's going to actually be open on the 27th of February, that's this coming Monday, but give it a week or so because... Uh, we're still getting stock and things to flow into the store so realistically uh, give the store a call before you uh, head in there uh, we'll put all the details up uh, once we're ready to serve you guys in our new store on the northern beaches it'll really shake things up on that side of Sydney and uh, give people a, a, a good opportunity to come and get some correct advice from a dealer that is just solely dedicated to supplying the best equipment in the world Mind Lab metal detectors. So, um, uh, the stores are going to cater very much for our coin and treasure hunters. We're going to run lots and lots of beach stuff on the beaches in northern Sydney. Um, and it's also going to have all the gear you need if you're going to do a lap around the country to look for that precious yellow metal. Now, Sarah from the Penrith store, she's going to be there to look after uh, all of your needs uh, in the initial stages. We are looking for the staff right across the organisation now, so if anyone's thinking they might like to do some part-time work in either Sydney, uh, we've got some opportunities that will be coming up shortly in uh, good old Bendigo, and I'm always uh, interested in getting some people on board in Melbourne to try and uh, promote some new things we've got coming up so you'll see some adverts going out about those shortly okay uh, i have a little bit more about the store and uh well the latest miners den my lab metal to take the superstore coming up a little later in the show now look let's take a look at uh, the gold price now and it's not a terrific week uh despite uh a few days ago a high of 25 uh, sorry 2682 an ounce Currently, the precious metal is sitting on 2,663 per troy ounce, which is just a few dollars uh, less than what it was this time. And I think it's uh, just uh, looking at it before I came on, it's, uh, it's fluctuating up a little bit again. Um, so, a little bit less. Silver, well, you can see the metal has uh, experienced a small um, rally over the past few days and uh, to make up for some of the losses uh, in previous weeks. Currently, it's sitting at around about $31.54 per troy ounce and that's about 40 cents less than it was this last time last week. So, it's, uh, it's still not great on the old silver either, but let's keep our eye on it on the Mind Lab show and we'll bring you the ranking news as soon as it comes in again. Now look, uh, the first of our major events for the team is done and dusted. The Adelaide Let's Go Caravan and Camping Show was a huge success with uh, around about 22,000, maybe 23,000 people filing past uh, the doors and of course uh, seeing everything Mine Lab on the Miner's Den stand. Um, that was over five days, so numbers were down a little bit on the show, but boy, we did uh, very, very well. Very, very uh, pleased with uh, the setup over there and everything like that. And it was also great to catch up with many gold prospectors and treasure hunters and some of those guys brought some gear and got great prices uh, as per usual from Miner's Den. My lab had several staff assisting throughout the weekend. And look, there's a big thank you goes out to uh, Sarah from Mine Lab, Jonathan, James, Nick, 
from Freaky, who was uh, there to give us a hand. Uh, so we had some of the MyLab engineers out there, uh, as well as some of the admin staff in. Uh, it was great to catch up with all those people. Uh, and they were all there to have a chat to you guys about what's happening in all things uh, MyLab. Of course, uh, Beachy Bruce from the Adelaide store and Brad from MyLab, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, guys. You really got stuck in and uh, had the show set up perfectly for us uh, when Denise and I arrived on Thursday. Bruce also ran the show for us uh, on uh, Wednesday. Once again, top job. Uh, thank you, Bruce. Thank you, Brad. Thank you to all who came and saw us. And thank you, Milo, for continuing to support our uh, shows right across the country. So there's a short little clip here just to some of the highlights of Bruce shot while we were in Adelaide. Let's um, uh, have a look at that now. <laughs> I'm a modern day prospector and I carry me detector and my ears are fairly ringing from the signals they receive. Oh, I've heard it and I've dug it, but I've never found a nugget and I'm wondering if this damn machine is just made to deceive. Oh, but I swing it to and fro as around the bush I go. Okay, well, that was uh, another clip. That was actually shot there by uh, Beachy Bruce, and uh, thank you again for that, uh, Bruce. Uh, that's all done and dusted. Well, this morning, uh, Denise and I are uh, headed uh, into the Melbourne showgrounds for the... Victorian Caravan and Camping Super Show. Uh, Miners Den is, uh, we're there until Sunday by the way, so if you want to come in and drop in and say hello, uh, have a chat to uh, Brad from MindLab who'll be on the stand from tomorrow afternoon, um, or myself or Denise, and we'll get you sorted. We're on stand number 57, um, and as I said, uh, MindLab's technical uh, sales rep, uh, Brad, is there to assist. Got any questions? Drop in. Uh, throw a question at Brad or myself and uh, we'll see if we can't help you get out and dig some more holes. So there's some info in the feed, there's some links and stuff there if you want to get onto that one as well. Uh, only a week or so after that we uh, head off to Mornington for the Great Outdoors and 4x4 Expo at the Mornington Racecourse. Now that's on from the 10th till the 13th of March. So let's have a long weekend. We're open on the Monday as well this time. Again, there's some links in the feed guys if you want to find out more information about that one. Miners Den, Miner Metal Detector Demo Days. These things are going to kick off again on uh, Sunday, the uh, Saturday, the 4th of March, I should say, at all of the Mine Lab, uh, Meta, Mine Lab Metal Detector Superstores, with the exception of uh, Brookvale this year. The sessions are great and they're designed uh, to get you up to speed on what's the latest available and its intended uses on the whole range of Mine Lab Metal Detectors. Uh, the season kicks off with a short trip down to the demonstration area. The session kicks off, I should say, not the season. Uh, down to the demonstration area where the host will take you through the majority of the MyLab range of machines. It'll point out uh, anything that is uh, unique to each of the units and its features, its functions, and will give you a clear idea on its intended use. There is a difference between coin and relic and uh, treasure and gold machines, I should say, and uh, we know our machines backwards here at the superstores right across the country, and we'll get you into the right mine lab machine for you. It is very, very easy to get lost with all the options. If you happen to roll up to uh, online and start looking, there's detectors everywhere. You go to some of these multi-branded dealers and the poor guys are trying to sell you, you know, 20 or 25 models. Uh, it just gets so confusing. That's why we've had to put in the MyLab Metal Detector Demo Days exclusively to Miners Den Australia. Now these simple and easy to understand events put you in the perfect position to know that you're selecting the correct MyLab metal detector for your requirements. Um, it's not a training day, it's not intended to, um, uh, it's more intended to inform people of what is going to be uh, available and what's most suited to their needs. And it's designed for people who are wanting to get into the industry. If you've got a metal detector, it's probably not going to suit what you're wanting, but uh, you're welcome to come along and have a listen anyway. As well as the informative presentation down at the local park, uh, we'll give you a feed from the barbecue at the store afterwards, and there'll be a team of mine lab, well trained mine lab experts on hand to get you the correct gear for your needs. 
They're free to attend, but they do need to be booked online, in-store or over the phone. Now, the day kicks off, the red, and look, we only get you guys to book in so that, hey, we know how many to cater for for sausages and stuff on the barbecue when we get back to the store. Um, they kick off about 10.30am and you leave from the shop uh, and head down to the demonstration area. So you arrive somewhere around about uh, 10 to 15 minutes prior to the uh, 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 prior to us leaving, so about quarter past 10. It'll mean we can get them underway on time and give you all of the items and information that you're going to need to have a successful time gold prospecting or treasure hunting. Then, once you get a machine, this is when our training days kick in. So the training days that we're running this year in Bendigo are slightly different. So we're going to have a number of the team up there. Um, and the first of the dates are coming up uh, the 1st and 2nd of April. So there's sessions on for the 2300, there's sessions on for the 6000, and there's sessions on for the 7000. Now, I do know, I think we've just listed a new session up there, or if it's not up, it'll be up tomorrow for you guys. The 6000 session got booked out on uh, the Saturday. We're going to run another 6000 session, so uh, we're not running as many this year. If you can get there on the Sunday this time, well, uh, we can get you into 6000 training still. So there's two sessions for the 6000 now. There's still places left for both the SD and for the GPZ 7000. Okay, uh, like I said, Bendigo slightly different, more trainers, greater variety of information and knowledge, uh, a bigger group will be coming along, but uh, as we get a bigger group, we have more people coming out to train you out in the field. At lunch on both Saturday and Sunday, there's going to be a barbecue or a sausage sizzle at the Victorian training sessions in Bendigo. So, if you're in the morning session, then hang around and grab a stag or two before you head off. Or if you're coming to the afternoon session, we'll take, uh, come and grab a, a bit of grub before we take you on uh, an intensive learning experience with your MyLab metal detector. This is formal training dedicated to one machine per session. Make sure you're getting the information that you need just on your machine. I see many other training sessions where they don't care and you can roll up with uh, any detector you have. Nobody can possibly be an expert on every single detector that's out there and Miner's Den are the absolute out and out experts on mine lab metal detectors and honestly we don't know about any of the other machines. We don't even pretend that we know about every single machine that exists on the planet. We only know about the best machines that are available and they're always a mine lab metal detector. Well, in my book they are anyway. Uh, it's free, like I said, head, uh, if you come to the training, training's free if you purchase the machine through Australia's largest distributor of mine lab metal detectors, Miners Den. Now, of course, if you haven't purchased through us, well, look, sorry uh, we missed you, but uh, you're still able to get Australia's only certified mine lab training. Uh, it'll just be a small fee to, uh, to get you in on that, and then you'll know exactly what you're doing, like most of the people who come in and see Miners Den. Okay, so if, uh, if that happens and you happen to be doing that, that's great. We'll, have, we'll look after you, whatever happens. At this stage, the New South Wales training course is going to kick off on Saturday the 4th and Sunday the 5th of March at Waddle Flat again this time. Please get your bookings in early on these ones because numbers are a little bit limited, as I said, this year. There's links in the feed to get yourself trained before the season begins and we'll head, uh, and you head off for a remote prospecting adventure. Dates are online, as I said, they can book online, over the phone, or in store with that one as well. Of course, the big one for the year, the Australian Gold Prospectors Expo, and there will be a team of uh, many from both Miners Den and uh, the good folk over in Adelaide from Mine Lab are coming across again. Um, it's on at the Bendigo Showgrounds. Uh, Miners Den are the major sponsor here. We're going to throw in uh, a few seminars and things. I think I've got a seminar or two to do on uh, getting started in prospecting and things like that. Uh, coin and treasure hunting, as well as some fantastic giveaways. And I'm sure it'll make it a weekend to remember. There will, of course, be all the major players from the industry for this one. Um, and that's coming up on the, I think it's the 15th and 16th. I lost the dates there, but I think it's 15th and 16th of April. That one's going to be there. Uh, some super deals from the exhibitors also. Now, 
We're moving right along again here. We're going to have a quick look this time at our Lucky Live Viewer Giveaway. So look, this week's Viewer Giveaway, again, it's a ripper, and it's all about protecting your detector from damage when you're out in the bush and scratches and sticks and all that kind of stuff. This week I'm going to give away three metal detector control box covers for each of the uh, channels. So that's six prizes in total. It'll be three for Facebook, three for YouTube. The three, uh, for, the three for our Facebook friends, as I said, and uh, the people on YouTube. But these covers are, uh, um, so I'm offering this is slightly different this time. I've got the 6000 cover there, I've got the 2300 uh, cover, and I've got the earlier GPX series covers. So, how it's going to work this time is all you need to do, as per usual, is just whack a comment in the feed, and that gets you in with a chance to take away our lucky live viewer giveaway. Then, enjoy the show. And if you see your name uh, drawn as one of the lucky, or announced one of the lucky live viewers later on uh, then uh, in the show, then all you need to do is simply let Corey know with a PM, DM, or however you like, uh, over the net, uh, which machine you have, and we will get it out in the mail to you. Or if you happen to be near one of the superstores, then you may wish to drop in and collect it. Now, um, uh, if, you ha if you happen to win a cover, and you haven't got a machine yet, well, you're certainly at the right spot because we will sell you the machine you need to fit into that cover. So good luck and happy prospecting now. Now, look, uh, it's now time for, um, uh, have a look next at uh, the, I lost myself a little bit there, at our uh, coin and treasure stories. Now, we're going to have a look now at um, playing with the new my, uh, Man, my lab Equinox 900, um, and there's even a quick tip. Coffee Bush and I went out and had a look at resetting the machine modes, or setting indiv resetting individual modes on the coin and treasure machine. Let's have a look at how um, Mr. Coffee Bush was able to do that, and uh, it's a great little tip that not a lot of people know. Well, look, uh, we just learnt from uh, the Coffee Bush kid how we can actually set, move the segments in taking them out or putting them back in in a more efficient way on the Equinox 900. But look, did you know, uh, Mr. Coffee Bush, that uh, we can actually reset an individual mode back to factory settings? Instead of just doing the whole lot, you can just do one. Correct. So, oh, for okay. example, if you had some program that you liked for rings uh, in uh, Beach 2, for example, yep. uh, and you wanted to adjust what we've got here in Park 1, if you did the factory reset on the whole machine, yep. you'd lose your beach settings as well. Yeah, you would, yeah. Now, with this here, if we have ourselves in Park 1 mode, and this was the mode that we altered uh, just a little bit earlier, guys, um, in Park 1, and then press and hold the... This does it have to be back in the uh, yep just just manual back in, setting back in the manual yep. setting yep. yep so it's uh not not in the the other not settings or anything no parts, um yep. so with the the park one on uh that's the mode we want to reset press and hold down the detect button takes about five seconds you then saw sp came up on the screen there guys that has reset all of this area that we took out in our last little quick tip. Yeah, no, that's pretty good, that. I didn't know that. No, well, I've learned something. And so have I. Well, that's been another quick tip on the Equinox 900. For the Mind Lab Show. Okay, well, uh, that's a great little tip, and it's something that not a lot of people know about, about being able to reset that individual mode without resetting the whole machine back to factory presets. So it's a, it's a good little tip there. Um, we're going to move along now to our coin and treasure discoveries, and our first story comes this week from uh, our Manticore pre-order pre promo winners, Greg and Harley. It says, uh, since winning the MyLab Manticore, I've had some great finds. I primarily beach hunt, and the machine has been absolutely absolutely brilliant. Thanks again, Miners Den. And look, thanks for the update, uh, Greg and Harley. Glad to hear you're enjoying the man, of course. Uh, our next story comes from Francis, who writes, uh, not far from Maryborough on a day out to celebrate uh, with Neville Perry's win in court, I thought I had my GPX 6000 in the ute, but it was my Equinox 800. I was disappointed, but thought I'll just have to uh, get on with it. Only 20 metres from the car, a uh, point one uh, seventeen. Sorry, only 20 metres from the car, a 17 appeared on the screen, and uh, with nothing to lose, I scraped the dirt. Out came my very first Chinese coin. 
Yes, I was over the moon. A 1662 Chinese Empire dynasty coin, to be exact. Then, a foot away, an 1864 Thrippards. I couldn't believe my luck. Well, thank you, Francis. Yes, it's definitely worth having a swing with the MyLab coin and treasure machine when you're out on the gold fields. But particularly around areas that look like there um, was a settlement or a camp uh, there. The Coffee Boys Kid and I will be talking about exactly that a little later in the show. Now, thanks again, guys, for your stories and thanks for the update there. We're going to send you both out a $25 Miner's Den gift voucher for your contributions. All right, look, next we have Beachy Bruce from our Adelaide store with a quick tip on the vibration function on the Equinox 900. Let's have a look now and see what uh, Beachy Bruce can enlighten us. G'day ladies and gentlemen, Beachy Bruce here with a quick tip for the Mind Lab show. This one's on vibration function in conjunction with having the ferrous section wide open. And this is how we do it. So the very first thing that we're going to do is go into settings. And you can do this on any program of your choice. So we go through to the volume. Now we're going to press the frequency button that has turned on a vibration. Now that vibration is on, we're going to go to this again and press and hold. We have the ferrous, which is the first section. This is going to be broken into however many sections you have chosen with your tones. This being directly from the factory should be five tones. And now I'm going to turn on the vibration function for ferrous. And I'm going to turn the volume right down for ferrous. Now we can go through to the next segment. We're going to turn that off by using the frequency button. Go through to the next segment, rinse and repeat. All right, so from here now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through to the accept reject. I'm going to press minus and bring my cursor all the way to negative 19. Then I'm going to press and hold the accept reject button. And I'm going to add these ferrous sections back in. So I can now cycle through. Now we're back into the main program section. So as you can see, it's a pretty quick little hack to the machine. That now is going to allow us to get more information about our targets that are in the ground without having all of that sound assault our ears. So it's much easier to discern. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but in my mind, it is very much worth it. Have a good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Beachy signing off from the Mind Lab Show. Well, look, excuse me, guys, just trying to grab some uh, something to eat in between there. We've been rushed off our feet today. Look, um, thanks again. That was a great little tip there um, from Beachy. Um, let's now get in and uh, have a look at our current store offers. So, look, there are just heaps of store offers happening now uh, here, um, uh, still for this month. And there's a few more days before we change up the offers. So, look, uh, let's have a quick look and see what uh, see how much you can save here. Now. The PIB Profine 35, we've only got a few of these left now. They've actually walked out the door extremely fast. This is kind of the upgraded or um, improved model of the Profine 35. Much better stability on the machine, so you're not getting uh, things sounding off uh, um, in high interference areas and things like that. Now, these Profine 35s, normally 249 Celebrating coming back in, 229 uh, take 20 bucks and put it in your pocket for those savings. The 900 is on sale at the moment for 15.49. That's a saving for you of uh, over 150 bucks off the normal price. The Equinox 800, 11.49. That's a little better than our usual selling price, but uh, it's saving you guys $250. I've talked about the snake bite kit and the snake guard uh, bundle again, uh, 17 bucks saving there, 129.95. The 6,000, we're still throwing out a spare battery and uh, control box cover, uh, one buck extra, that gets you uh, $313 worth of savings. The MyLab SDC 2300, ripper deal, it's the best mid-range machine around. Uh, you get all the standard kit plus a control box cover, a minus M patch lead, a spare battery, and MyLab are still giving out a ProSonic with that as well. That saving with everything combined in there and the discount off the retail price, $1,218.95 in your pocket. 
That's the, well, it's uh, about half an ounce of gold. Just just under half an ounce of gold there that you're saving buying that one. The Mino Monst Gold Monster 1000, the premium entry-level gold prospecting metal detector. It's now even better value at Mine Lab, throwing in a spare battery. And as an added bonus, you get a free set of 300 gram 0.01 accuracy scales. That saves you about 418 bucks uh, on that whole deal there. Buy a, 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 a Manticore, a Vanquish or an Equinox in February, I'll throw you in a free sand scoop. So you have our bundle deal. Simply head to minersden.com.au and search or ask uh, search bundles or ask in store. As I mentioned earlier in the show, whew, I'm going, uh, getting ahead of myself here. Look, as I mentioned earlier in the show, the Coffee Bush and Kid and I have been out in the gold fields looking at an old campsite. Let's uh, check out what we're able to learn now. I'm a modern day prospector and I carry me detector and my ears are fairly ringing from the signals they receive. Oh, I've heard it and I've dug it, but I've never found a nugget. And I'm wondering if this damn machine is just made to deceive. G'day deceive. folks, I'm the coffee bush kid and I'm not alone. I'm Gold Digger Dave. And we're out detecting out here in the whipstick. Uh, told Dave of a place where I'd done a little bit of training with, uh, with Brad from Mine Lab. And we're out here today with the Equinox 900. We've got the six inch coil on we've got the 11 inch coil on. Now this spot here, Dave, is a little bit special because Brad and I were out here with my training when I started. Yep. And I spotted a lot of tin on the ground. Yep. And as we can, where is it here? Look at this, point, case in point. Okay. There's tin, in fact, that nearly wouldn't Looks surprise like it might have been an old bucket or something, maybe. Yeah, exactly. So when I start seeing stuff like this in the bush, I get a little bit excited because there's either two things. It's either been dumped here and there's a rubbish pile, which there could be coin in amongst. Yep. Or because we have mullock heaps out there, we've got small shafts all in behind us, there must have been someone living here. Now, if there was someone living here, they've dropped something. Absolutely. So we've got all this. Tin is the first telltale sign of uh, that. Tin is the big telltale sign at the start. The next thing that we would probably find will be glass somewhere. Yep. And you go, okay, well, this is a gully. They've been working here. And I, yeah, there it is. Over behind us there, Dave, yep. is a chimney mound. Now, these little chimney mounds are things that people just walk straight by. They don't notice them because they're, they're only about that high. But once you get your eye in, and you're a relic hunter or treasure hunter or whatever, uh, you can spot them and all of a sudden you've got new ground where no one has really been. Because if someone's coming through here chasing gold, yep. the last thing they want to do is come across a great big pile of tin. Correct. And so uh, it's a really good spot for the relic hunter. Absolutely it is. And uh, even though we are in a gold fields, uh, we can still find uh, coins and relics in where the old timers were living when they uh, were working this area back in the 1850s and 60s. So, Because they didn't work here and go back into town to sleep for the night and then walk back out again. They lived where they were working. Absolutely. And uh, maybe we'll take you up now, guys, and just have a closer examination of what these old chimney mounds are, give you a bit of an idea of what to look for when you're uh, out in the, the gold fields and you can never know, having an Equinox in the car along with your gold machine, uh, you may well score a coin or two, as I believe Brad did in this yep, area he, when he did you were doing your training. That's exactly right. We're going to have a look. All right, look, we're just going to go up here and have a bit of a look. Now, Mr Coffee Bush, this is a chimney that you were talking about before. It is, Dave. This is one of the more pronounced ones. You can see here, and Jamie's there filming nicely. Yep. It does have a bit of a back wall, but most of the time it will only be the mound like you can just see here. Yep, yep. That will more than likely be just what you find. You have a look at the orientation because they usually made them square, so we can see this is a flat wall. Yep, yep. This will be the front of it where the opening was more than likely simply because behind us here is a shaft and you've got the mullock heap over this side. Yep. We've got other workings over 
there and around us and behind us here in fact let oh head in here oh look yep. at this i'm in the bloody coffee bush how about that this is a flatter area coming off the chimney i would bet that this was where they had the tent set up because they didn't in these areas because the the rushes went from spot to spot they would only build a chimney yep and their dwelling was a canvas tent if they were lucky they had a fly over the outside of that but they were usually sort of around the i think it's eight meters oh uh, sorry eight foot or two 0.4 meters by three meters was sort of the size of the tent. Okay. They would have a bed, they would have a table. If there was two of them there, there'd be two single beds and the table. But you're only sort of looking at sort of coming this far yep. and potentially that sort of being the corner of it. Okay. Uh, very, very rudimentary uh, dwelling. But if, if someone said, Oh, geez, Charlie struck it rich over in the next gully and we're all heading off. You'd fold Pack your tent up. up, take your gear, and off you'd go. And this would be left to just, just the chimney go back remain. down into the yep. ground. So we've got one here. There's another one behind over there. And I reckon if we really looked hard, there'd be a couple more. So any area around here is absolutely ripe to detect with a relic detector. All the uh, great majority of the gold detective blokes and, and women, they won't worry about this because it will potentially be too trashy. Yep. And for the relic hunter, that's to our advantage. Absolutely. And uh, with the Equinox 900, we're going to be able to knock out some of that trash. We've got our small six inch coil on this time because we know that it is a bit rubbishy right. around here. And yeah, we'll only get the, we'll be able to hunt in amongst all the rubbish and try and pull out a coin or two if we can. That's it, well look, with that said guys, um, we're gonna actually uh, go and uh, do a bit of detecting now, and we'll come back in a little while, just let you know our experience, show you what we've uh, been able to clean up from here, and uh, good luck to us, Mr. Coffee Bush Kid. Yes, good luck to us indeed. <laughs> Well, it's always uh, good to get out and about, and uh, that's the whole idea. Exploring with uh, your metal detector out in the bush is very good fun, and it's even better <laughs> when you're hanging out with a coffee bush kid uh, out in the whipstick. And uh, I hope you're a little bit there. We've got a couple more of those that we'll bring to you in uh, future. We've got a few other sites and things that are a little different. We'll just take you around a couple of them so that you'll be able to recognise those kind of features when you're uh, out in the scrub and hopefully uh, jag yourself some old coins or relics and things like that. All right, now look, uh, we're going to move on to our product spotlight. And this is product spotlight is also our viewer giveaway. Um, this product spotlight, we have a look at some of the covers and things that we're offering um, for the GPX series, the GPX 6000 and the SDC 2300 metal detectors. Now look, I'll start with a budget cover for the GPX 6000. So look, I've got one of those here. Um, that's the budget cover. It covers the control box, nice and cheap, 65 bucks. Uh, protects it very, very well. So you can get one of those and that's uh, available tonight if that's what you wanted to choose, should you be the lucky live viewer giver away winner um, if you're looking to go a little bit further and uh, upgrade it a little bit I've been through this before so I'm not going to take this one out of the bag but in here I'll shake it upside down there in here I've got a couple of other bits and pieces I've got my armrest strap I've got my armrest cover I've got my screen protector and of course I've got a little shade uh, a little uh, shade, uh, uh, shade cloth to go over the actual uh, top of the thing you can see it there it protects the, the sun from coming on the screen so you get all that a little bit dearer that's 115 bucks that one will set you back. Now, I haven't got my SDC 2300 one here. I took them all into the show uh, uh, with me uh, this week. So uh, there is a cover there also. If you want to select the 2300 cover, you can see it up on the screen there now. 75 bucks gets you out of trouble with that. Um, it'll protect your investment from bumps and scratches while you're out in the great outdoors. Uh, it's got a bit of mesh over the speaker, so it's uh, still able to hear the machine. It uh, uh, fits on to any SDC using the supplied Velcro tabs. 
Now, my last cover is for the GPX series to gain. I've taken all those out to the show with me today out of Melbourne. But that's what the cover looks like there. Um, it covers uh, the GPX 5000, GPX 45 and the GPX 4000 and right back into the GP range uh, of uh, uh, machines as well. So that uh, is uh, nicely priced there at 40 bucks. Again, keeps the resale value for hire for you and it protects the control box. Well, a coffee bush kid and I uh, love hitting the old tennis courts in central Bendigo. And forget the rackets. We got both the Equinox 800 and the Equinox 900 and gave it a run. Let's have a look at how we went. I'm a modern day prospector and I carry me detector. And my ears are fairly ringing from the signals they receive. Oh, I've heard it and I've dug it, but I've never found a nugget. And I'm wondering if this damn machine is just made to deceive. Well, we're back out here still swinging with the coffee bush kid. And gold digger Dave. And uh, we've been doing okay. We've graduated from uh, beaver tongue ring pulls uh, right through to some alfoil. And yep. we even scored our first 20 cent and 50 cent coin spill right here in the heart of Bendigo. Now look, this one, uh, we're going to call it again. We think this is a great little signal. We can hear the high pitch sound coming out. It's coming in about a 32 on the Equinox 800. Uh, again, we're using the same size coil, set up very, very similar, except uh, Mr. Coffee Bush on the 900 has that extra discrimination. Yep. Listen to that. That sounds very, very good. It's only very shallow as well. I'll let you uh, run over with the 900 there. Absolutely solid, isn't oh, it? Oh yeah, that's beautiful. That's up in the low 90s. You'd, I'm going to call Penny. Okay, let's have a look here. And it's just, just in there. It's not very deep. You can hear from the pinpointer there as well. Yeah. So we go back away from it. All I want to do is I want to, and the ground's a bit thicker here, I just want to fracture it. Yep, and lift it out without damaging uh, whatever uh, treasure we might have down below here. Yep. Well, I wasn't expecting that. No, I'm thinking I'm seeing something square on the side I there, is it? too. If you want to come in here, well, that's bloody interesting. Well, I thought it would have been a penny. That was my call. That is a piece of a casting. It has been painted or enameled. Um... And it's busted through there and also there. That's just... And actually, it's light. I'm going to say that's aluminium, but that's a hell of a buddy signal. That was glorious. That was a penny all the way till it wasn't. You really don't know what you have got in the ground until you dig it out. And this is all a learning experience with the 900 as well. Yep. Um, certainly, uh, we're adding lots of uh, uh, goodies to our collection. We are. Not all the right colour, but it's fun anyway. It is. Well, I'm on the side of the embankment here, and I've got me a nice signal. It is coming in at, we'll say, 67, thereabouts, mid-60s on the Equinox 900. Dave, do you want to have a swing there and make the call of what it is on the 800? Let's have a look. Look, uh, with that... I'm almost certainly, it seems like it's down a little bit, but I'll almost be certainly calling it as a one or a two dollar coin in this case. Um, I'm used to that sound uh, from hunting goldies with the 800 plenty of times before. Yep, well. I don't know what else it could be, but I think it's uh, likely, that I, well it could be anything, but it's highly likely mm. I think that we're on to a, a goldie or something here at the moment. Oh, we say excitedly. Yeah, it's certainly not uh, a one or a two dollar coin. Yes, there we go. That, in its roughness, is a Commonwealth half penny. It was a good signal. Got a little bit of a bubbling on it. But the most important thing that we want to know... What's our date <laughs> on here, which we're getting around to have a look at? Oh, it's only one of those 1923 jobs. Ah, oh, well, throw it back. Really, that's all you could really do with that one. <laughs> and the interesting thing is too, Dave, is that with our coin spill, 50 and 20 cent piece, and that last bit of casting, 
they are big targets. Yes. So someone, if someone's been here, they're either shocking at detecting or no one's been here. It, I'm probably banking a little bit on the uh, the, ladder. On the, the ladder that uh, nobody's been here because we're really not having to dig that deep. Uh, there's a little bit of trash around, as we've shown when we dug it up, but uh, it's got great potential for the place that's been here for years. So, yep. And the other thing is, is that we are actually digging less trash than when we started. We've moved away from under the tree. We're out in the more open area. Maybe there were some trees back here in the day, but um, uh, certainly there's some uh, coins coming up. Yep, there is indeed. Look, even after using the Equinox uh, 800 for quite a while, and uh, you're just getting used to the 900 yep. now, Mr. Coffee Bush, yep. sometimes you're going to get a target out here, and you just go, well... We've got to dig it. It's solid. And we've got no idea what the number happens to mean on this one. I haven't seen it come up before. Uh, we'll see if we can get it out of the ground, and hopefully it's a number that we'll be watching for in the future. Do you want to have a swing on it? I will, straight over the top. That's coming in around the 27 mark. It's only showing a couple inches down there. It's come from across this way. Consistently staying at the 27 there. So it's good. It's I nice think that's got to be worth a look. That was with the 800. And the 900. 83. Couple of bars down. Yep, she's just playing with me just down yep, in there. Down in there. Sounds like it's in a little bit. Mm. Shush. Well, just down there we see a little bit of greenness and an edge. So Dave's done just well in finding that. Flicking him out now. Yeah, there we go. Now, what have we done? Is that, uh, uh, was that your two cent piece, Mr. Coffee Bush? I think you'd be thrilled to see this. Absolutely. With the old frill neck lizard on there. And yes, it is a two cent piece, which again goes to show that anyone with a detector, if they've missed this, they've either not done it properly or no one's been here. That's right. And it is uh, very, very uh, shallow, so it's not deep. Um, on an area that we're allowed to uh, prospect around and uh, it's a good way to finish off uh, the day with a two cent coin. Yep. Would have liked it to have been a gold sovereign, but this will do. Thank you for watching uh, the Mind Lab Show. Indeed. To see that elusive yellow gold all right, well, once again, uh, another great time out with a coffee bush kid, and I uh, hope you learn a little bit there, a few finds and stuff that we got. So very, very pleased to be wandering around out there. We're going to do a lot more of this. Uh, whether it's just perfect, uh, start to cool off a little bit, we can get out and detect, and we'll do some more gold stuff for you with uh, with a couple of other coils and things uh, very, very shortly. Let's come back in and have a look at competition time. So competition time, it's always happening here at Miner's Den, and you'll find that Miner's Dens are giving away a truckload of gear to help you in the great outdoors. Whether it's being lucky live deal giveaway uh, winners like tonight or scoring a gift card with Miner's Den uh, competitions for your treasure finds or your gold finds, um, you're always a winner when you're watching the Mine Lab show or shopping with Miner's Den. Now, look, just to recap quickly on our competition, we have the Gold Discoveries and the Coin and Treasure Discoveries competitions. There's a $25 gift card sent to you when we use your story on our socials. Um, all you have to do, it's your favourite story or something that's quirky or interesting about one of your finds. Simply head to minersden.com.au and put your entries in or follow the links in the feed. Now, of course, uh, we've still uh, got our running our Gold Digger Dave's Gourmet Pay to Photo Competition. Now, look, this one couldn't be easier to win it. Simply pan the bag, tub, or a uh, bucket of Gold Digger Dave's Gourmet Pay Dirt. Take a photo of the finds, including any redeemable collectible tokens, and post it to our pinned post on our Facebook page, and you're in the running for a $50 gift card. I have a new one each month. Now, look, you will have already seen this week's Coin and Treasure uh, discoveries earlier in the show, and we're going to bring you another great finds uh, for gold very shortly. Let's have a look at a couple of the entries that come in this week for the Pay Dirt photo competition. First up, we have uh, an entry from Chris who scored some nice little nuggies from his bag of gourmet Pay Dirt. 
Uh, next one came in from Tina, who also scored quite well with 0.28 grams from her gold, uh, gold from her pay dirt bag. Um, thank you for all the submissions and thank you for sharing. I've got a couple of videos and things that we're going to get up uh, that people have sent in as well. Uh, you can send in a video if you'd like to. Um, and I'll uh, put those up uh, hopefully on next week's show for you. All right, well, we're counting down now to the final couple of days of my WA adventure to the Pilbara. Let's see how I go with the latest episode of Detecting with Dave. Well, guys, welcome back. Day 13, Pilbara Prospecting Adventure. Gold Digger Dave here from the Mine Lab Show. I've got Nugget Nathan, who's scoring some gold as well on the camera here. And we've found four little pieces. Well, I've found four or five little bits in this area. I've found a number of other targets, and uh, we can, haven't had any work being done up on this part of the hill. There's a lot of spin effects and things around. Everywhere I'm poking my coil, I'm getting a sound. Now last night, we had a little bit of rain come in and uh, it's all cleared up. It's fantastic weather for detecting, probably around the 25, 26 degrees, heading towards 30, let's say 31. This is our second, well, it's actually our last full day out here in the Pilbara and we're trying to make the most of it. I don't even know if we'll get time to eat that we're digging so much gold at the moment. Let's have a listen to this one here now. Now, I think that's being hidden by this bit of spin effects, or possibly this rock. So I'm going to kick it out of the way, clear a bit of area. Well, it wasn't the rock, so it's, it's got a bit of spin effects there. Easy way to remove the spin effects, flat end of your pick, down to here, chop, 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 chop. Now, this stuff is everywhere, so... Um, luckily, uh, I've been able to take that one out without really uh, doing any effect at all to uh, the spin effects that surround here. Let's have a listen over it again now. Coming in as a clear target there. Going to dig a bit more soil from the top. Scrape him back there. I reckon I could possibly have two targets here. Matter of fact, I'm almost certain I have two targets now. Let's get this one out first. Still nothing yet. Not in that lot there. Okay, got to be somewhere in here. I can now see somewhere in one of those little lumps. Get rid of those two. It's gently out of there. You can see just there, that's my little piece of gold after it's been in the cleaner. And it's shining right at you. Gold Digger Dave strikes again on the Pilbara prospecting adventure to Western Australia. Now just for your information guys, I'm getting this tiny gold, I'm using manual one on the GPX 6000 standard 11 inch coil on at the moment and literally there is gold everywhere where we've been here. Let's dig out the other second target I had there and see what else we've got. Clearly that is another target right there. I'm not expecting anything large, but let's just scrape it back again. See if we can't get a second nugget from under the spin effects in the Pilbara WA. Let's have a look here again. We've moved it. Quite literally this gold is on top of the ground. Not in that lot. Got the target here. In you go. So I got here, I'll bring it over to the camera again, give you a bit of a look. And it's in this little lump here, can't see it just at the moment, but I'm sure we will unveil one tiny little nugget in just a moment or two. Sit there. 
Okay, it's going to need to be cleaned up again, so just let me do that for you now. Bingo. Once again, two nuggets, one bit of spin effects, Gold Digger Dave, Pilbara, Western Australia, prospecting adventure. Now look, I don't think anybody's been on this ground, especially haven't been with a GPX 6000. Um, I haven't seen any other detector operators' holes here. We could be the first people to be digging gold on this patch of ground. Now I'm only about 10 feet maybe three metres from where I was previously and I got a signal uh, just in here now I've had to knock with my foot this rock out of the way so not only have we got spin effects uh, making it difficult to get the uh, gold out there's dirty big rocks in the way as well let's have a listen to the target now clearly another signal there now this will be the third target that we've dug up in this just little area here, plus the ones that I dug before, before we started filming. Okay, moved it again. Got the target here now. Once again, I can just see it in here. Let me bring it over for you to have a look at there. Over to the camera barrel here. Looking right down there, straight in there. You can see him smiling back at you. Three pieces of gold, 10 feet, one rock and one spin effects removed. All right, well, that was uh, very, very interesting. Again, we've got, I think, one more, maybe two more sessions to come from our uh, uh, WA prospecting adventure to the Pilbara. And uh, they're quite exciting, those. And I've still got a few bits and pieces that I want to show you after we finish what we filmed over there, a couple of other things that we did as well. So let's move right along now from one lot of gold that I was discovering to our gold discovery stories. So look, this week um, I've got some uh, great stories. And first up, we have one from Glenn, who writes, uh, first day of using newly acquired and longed for SD2300, I take off to a local beach even though I was, wasn't purchased for that reason. But due to ease, closeness and a nice afternoon, I thought why not? Well, 10 cent coins are deep, hooks are gladly removed and a clean up of bottle caps appreciatively taken and replaced in a nearby bin. Uh, a young lady uh, was seen running up the beach earlier, later returning somewhat upset, uh, somewhat upset looking. She had lost her fine gold chain and pendant. Without exact location being known, she had to, she had to keep going. It was getting late. She returned, with her phone, she returned with her phone number and details and everything were taken and I walked back a couple of hundred metres to have a detect in the, nearing the darkness. An hour later and it's in my hand. A phone call later hears an unbelieving no. You have you? No way. Not possible? Really? I'm going to tell my mum uh, one more decent wave and the next tide and it was gone. I have no doubt about that. Um, I had so much, uh, it had so much sentimental value, possibly far more than perhaps its uh, dollar value. But that's not what this is about. It's not about the money. It's not about, look at me, I found it. Um, uh, there's no monetary reward and nor should it be asked for. For I often uh, look upon seeing a distraught face uh, and the, the, the pleasure of seeing them come back again is just uh, really, really great. Yep. Here it is, a fellow seeking friends, an hour or two's wandering around gave me more happiness in the heart. Okay, it's not about the, the fine, it's about getting out and switching on the machine or dipping, uh, dipping in that pan. The smiles here though were well seen, well, well they were seen multiple times in thanks just what's needed in return for a nice gesture. Remember, I offered uh, just a maybe, perhaps, or at least try. But it paid off for both of us. May your detecting views always uh, be able to find uh, such depths within. 
for in this case the reward is in seeing such is far greater than money could give. Well, look, thanks for your heartwarming story there, Glenn. It's good to remind you that uh, this is a great lifestyle and detecting game can bring some joy to lots and lots of people. We'll be sending you a $25 gift voucher for your contribution. And look, a quick one from Michael who writes, uh, Hi guys and girls, uh, I found a nice nugget last year up along uh, a secret creek at Claremont. Uh, with my 5,000. Nice job there, Michael. Good to uh, hear the 5,000 still doing its job. A 25 buck gift voucher is on its way out to you as well. All right, well, it's uh, time now. It gets into one of my uh, favourite parts of the show, and it's called Ask Dave. The first uh, comes from uh, the first question comes from Francis, who asks, "How do you test the purity of gold?" Look, hi Francis, look, the way to test the purity for gold is by using what is known as an RF gun. This is an instrument that some gold buyers and jewellers have that is used to test for purity. Um, I haven't used one of these myself, but uh, we'll try and get someone on the show uh, in the next few weeks to explain it a little more. Um, that's a, quite a dear option there. You've got to be a jeweller or uh, a gold buyer or somebody like that really big uh, in the game to try and have, a, have a, one of those. But there are some cheaper option or manual options uh, with some manual kits again. Uh, you'll find that you can get a very accurate indication of the purity also by smelting the gold. I recently sent a batch to a refiner and it came back with the exact purity and even gave me the amount of silver that was in my parcel. My assay came back in about 93% pure gold and it also contained around about 5% silver. Look, uh, I hope that helps you, Francis. Um, uh, melting it down or having a professional melt it down, uh, head to a jeweller with an RF gun will give you some idea on the purity of what you've got there. Look, next up, I have a question from uh, Lyndon who asks, uh, Hi Dave, for those who are still using the older technology, in my case, a GPX 4800, what coil would you suggest for Western Australia? I'm considering one of the Nugget Finder Revolution coils. Alas, both the 6,000 and 7,000 are currently out of reach. Look, highly, there's nothing wrong with a GPX 4800. They are still a great machine, and I'm sure uh, uh, the coil, uh, and I'm not sure what coils you currently have, but it would certainly recommend a Nugget Finder Evolution coil, and for the smaller stuff, I'd be going for a 12 by 7. Look, this is a fantastic coil. It's super sharp on those smaller nuggets, as well as being easy to get to the ground in the scrubby areas. And, of course, being elliptical, it's a breeze to pinpoint with. If you haven't uh, got a larger coil, then maybe something like a 17 by 13 coil is also great to uh, add to your kit uh, for getting a little deeper on the larger stuff. And it'll also help you uh, cover bigger areas a little more quickly. I'll put some links in the feed on where you can learn a little bit more about both of those calls, and if you like, make a purchase. Good luck on the trip. Now look, uh, don't forget, if you've got a question, put it in the feed or on our weekly call out on our Facebook page. Uh, I'll give you an answer with the correct information and bring it to you live on a future episode of the Mind Lab Show. Okay, well, well, big thank you again for tuning in to the night show. I really hope you've enjoyed this episode. So let's have a look now at who our lucky uh, giveaway winners are. I've got a couple of them here. Let's go straight to Facebook. And I've got Tom Kirkman, Peter James, and Derek Lyons. Now look, guys, if you've been names been called out there for Facebook, let Corey know which machine you would like the cover for, and we'll get it into the mail for you very quickly, or we will uh, drop... You're welcome to drop it and pick it up from a store as well. Uh, on our YouTube, we've got Susan, Susan Van Weagle, congratulations. Kim Scone and a Top End Gold. You guys have also scored um, a cover. Let me know which one you want and it'll be in the mail very shortly. Well, let Corey know, not me. It'll be in the mail very, very shortly for you. Well... Uh, very, very busy day with uh, the show and everything happening and we're down here in Melbourne uh, doing our live from Melbourne again this time. A big thank you there to Scotty for getting this set up. Uh, of course the illustrious Chris was also involved to put his hand in there to give us a set up. I haven't been able to get in and we only just came straight from the show so uh, with the traffic we're running a little bit late. Let's uh, have a look. It's a wrap for another great show. Before I go, as per usual, let's have a look at what's coming up on episode 118 of the Mind Lab show. Okay, firstly, we're going to have a look at the coffee bush. Uh, Kid and I are going to continue our adventure in the whipstick as we try our luck with the Equinox 900. 
Beachy Bruce will be back with another quick tip. I'll continue my search for gold in the Pilbara. As always, I'll answer your questions live and much, much more. I'm Gold Digger Dave. Thanks for watching the Mine Lab Show. Thanks for watching. Remember, like, subscribe, and share. Tune in next week for another episode of the Mine Lab Show. I'm out there swinging.